My name is Bishop Marcus A. Johnson Sr. with a public service announcement. Just as the wildfires burn in Canada, crossing the U.S. borders, spreading toxic fumes down the East Coast, spiritually, the same is happening in our city, Baltimore. Fires of lawlessness, violence, inequities, poverty, hatred, and pain are burning up our communities. You and I know God has mandated his people to occupy the land until he comes. Therefore, we must be determined that Baltimore will not disintegrate into ashes, not on our watch. So on Saturday, July 22nd, the Multicultural Prayer Movement is mobilizing the Blessed Baltimore Prayer Motorcade with police escort. The caravan of buses and vans full of prayer intercessors will stop at five different locations to rally and extinguish these fires. We need you and your church to register your van or bus to join this grand procession. You can register at 410-483-0100. That is 410-483-0100. And leave the name of a contact person a callback number to receive confirmation and further details. Please help us stop the spread of these consuming fires. We will meet at 9 a.m. and depart at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, July 22nd for the Bless Baltimore Prayer Motorcade. This city, that there may be freedom, that there may be peace, that there may be safety. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the Lord glory manifest itself in the heart of this city. I say that I speak of not just the biological mothers, grandmothers, aunts, uh, I almost said uncles, uh, aunts, uh, sometimes sisters act in the capacity as a mother. Some of the older sisters know what I'm talking about. And so for all of those that have served and serve in that capacity. Happy Mother's Day to you. And so today, I wanna to just continue to speak on in the same vein, in light of the fact that it is Mother's Day, I wanna talk about Mother's Graces. Mother's Graces. And I'm gonna read again from 1 Peter, we did this last week, 1 Peter chapter five, Verse 10, it is so appropriate, and I'll help us to understand that. I'm going to read two verses, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, and then I'm going to read James chapter 1, verse 17. So just follow with me. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect establish, strengthen, settle you, the God of all grace. And then James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Mother's graces mother's graces. Let us pray. Father, we bless you this, the Lord's day. We bless you on this Mother's Day for being the God of all graces, for being the source of everything that we need. We bless you for what you have done for us and continue to do for us through mothers. It is your love that is extended through them to bless the entire world. And so God, we completely bow our heads in humble admiration and in worship just to know without you we could do nothing, but with you all things are possible. Bless us today as we look at mother's graces, as we acknowledge where they come from. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Mother's graces. When I think of grace, often some women use that name as their first name, grace. But when I think of grace, I think of a mother. I think of a mother. When I think of being gracious, 
and everybody can be gracious, male and female, but most definitely you think of the tenderness of a mother who bestows graciousness upon us. Well, where did that grace come from? Was she just born with it in and of herself? I think not. I think the God of all graces bestowed the grace upon a mother that she could then bestow it upon the children and whoever she encounters. What is a mother when we think of a mother? What is a mother? Well, the state of being a mother most commonly occurs after giving birth. That's the most obvious identification of a mother. But then adoption or marrying or partnering with an existing parent. One steps into motherhood. Sometimes assuming the role of parenting unofficially, outside of legal means, how? But understood through relational bonds like neighbors or a teacher or a community leader, etc. Women step into that role as a mother, sometimes just temporarily, because a child is in need and a mother just knows how. I often think that when children are playing and if a child falls, typically there's a different response from the father and the mother. The father would say, oh, come on, get yourself together, shake yourself, come on, be strong if it's a boy. Come on, you can take it, you can handle it, come on, toughen up. That's a father's response because he didn't want the child to get stuck and can't get up and whatever, whatever. And, and typically men don't like a lot of crying anyway. Let the men say amen. You know I'm telling the truth. But a mother, same child, that the father said, toughen up. Come here, did that hurt? Come here, baby. That's just the difference in how a mother typically will respond to a child that's hurt. Let me kiss it. Mother will do that. And typically a child will know if they want that response, they turn to the mother. And so there's something special about a mother. Here's the premise for this word today. All the mother's graces are a reflection of God's grace and God's goodness towards us. That's what a mother's grace is. It is God's grace and God's goodness extended towards us because God created and endowed mothers with his graces. God wants us to know the extent of his love towards us, and he funnels it through a mother, through a mother. There's a lot that a mother does in order to provide, in order to maintain, in order to enable the best of us to come forth a mother. How many judges in a courtroom would have slammed the book down but a mother that says, I'm asking the court to have mercy on my child. That's my son. That's my daughter. A mother can evoke mercy simply by standing in grace. Remember, grace is undeserved. Grace is not earned. You can't buy grace. Grace is given based upon a need. And grace is given to satisfy a void. And so without any guarantee of a return, grace is given to ensure that one is blessed where they need it most. If you know that's right, say amen. amen. So let, let, let's, 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 look at, let's look at a mother. And, and the Bible is filled with examples of godly mothers that made all the difference in the outcome of a situation. It was what a mother did. A mother made the difference. Look at this. First, the mother's body provides the grace of nourishment to the developing embryo or fetus through the umbilical cord. 
Because mothers are resourceful. Think about it. For nine months, that baby has got to be fed. And that baby is nourished by the grace of nourishment from the mothers. Because mothers are nourishers. And because the baby is connected to the mother, then the baby is fed. Isn't that very typical of God himself? That once we are baptized into the body of Christ, we are directly connected to the source. And God feeds us life. And the life he feeds us is specific. It's eternal life. Which means he doesn't turn it on and turn it off. But God continuously provides nourishment for us. So that the scripture says, for in him we live, we move, and we have our being. And we can't make it without God. We need his word. We need his love. We need his strength. We need his spirit. Am I talking to anybody? We need that from the Lord. And sometimes we might think we can make it on our own. But how many know that there have been some times it was real obvious, without the Lord, I won't make it. But because I'm connected to him, then the Lord will allow, the Holy Spirit will bring back to my remembrance scriptures or, or, or words of, uh, out, of the, out of the Bible that God has spoken to us that will then give us the life that we need to stand in that particular situation. God will do it. Because God is a nourisher. Therefore, he's given mothers to nourish even the unborn child so that the child can survive in the womb. God is all about survival, y'all. God wants us to survive. As a matter of fact, he wants us to do more than survive. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it how? Have it how? God doesn't want us just to exist. God wants us to thrive. And God wants us to experience the maximization of our possibilities because God is a nourisher. So a mother provides the grace of nourishment. Second, the mother's womb. So we said the body provides the grace of nourishment. The mother's womb provides the grace of protection to the developing embryo and fetus throughout the pregnancy because mothers are defenders. One thing for a man to come and defend, but I'm going to tell you, when a, when a woman comes and she's going to fight you, you better back up. I remember we were kids. I know you don't remember this mother. But we lived near a high school, and the kids would come up on the porch, and, and they would taunt and tease us. And I remember my mother coming on that porch and saying, get off of my porch. She was protecting her children. And they got off, too. When they saw that broom, when they saw that lady, they got off that porch. Because even in the animal world, you don't mess with a mother's children. Her cubs, I was on a safari once in, in Africa, and we were in an open jeep, and we were going through and where the lioness was. And the guy told us that the lions, lioness thinks that the entire jeep is an animal, so they won't bother us. As long as we're in the jeep, they see us all as one thing, not as individuals. And this one lady decided she would get out of the Jeep to take a picture. So she stepped out of the Jeep, and the lioness, who was sitting toward the bush, raised her head and turned her body. She was ready to go into attack mode. And the man said, Miss, back slowly into the Jeep. And I'm sitting there saying, I could kill her. She has now put all of us at risk because she want to take a little picture. Why don't you go online and download a picture? So she backed into the Jeep, 
And she sat down in the Jeep, and the man said, what were you thinking? He says, she didn't know there were people in here. She thought we were all one thing. Don't ever do that. So when he drove around the bush, there were cubs in there. She was going to defend her babies because that's the nature of a mother. A mother is a defender. She's a protector. And a mother is going to make whatever sacrifice she's got to make for the good of her babies. Let the mother say amen. amen. It's just something about a mother who, who, who watches over her young. She watches over. Three, mother's labor. We looked at her body giving grace of nourishment, the womb giving grace of protection, but a mother's labor provides the grace of deliverance to the developed fetus to be born into this world through a mother's sacrifice. Can you imagine the most difficult, typically the most difficult part of the pregnancy is the mother's sacrifice to deliver that child. Isn't that what Jesus did for us? When he was on the cross, he was in labor. He was bearing the pain and the suffering and the pressure and the agony for something he did not deserve. And such is the case with a mother. That pain she goes through to birth that child she doesn't deserve that, but the child needs it. So she'll bear down, breathe, do whatever she needs to do to safely deliver that baby. I, 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 think, I think a woman in labor is very spiritual. I think it's very spiritual because it shows that it is at great cost to bring about victory, to bring about freedom, to bring about deliverance. It's not a casual activity. It's laborious. It's traumatic. It's not easy. But a mother is built to bring deliverance. Good God, I reckon. A mother knows how to do it. A mother knows how to... In order to bring deliverance, a mother has to endure. She's got to persevere. And often, she's got to push. I love it because our greatest blessings will often come when we're willing to push. When we're willing to press. Ha! When we're willing to bear down and do whatever I need to do to bring forth a blessing. Oh, I wish somebody would say something. You know, years ago, we, we, we later found out a lot of things that we did wasn't necessary, like you had to do it that way. But some of us remember back in the day when we tarried for the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about when you went to the altar and, and somebody would stand with you and they would coach you along and you would pray and you would sweat and the tears would fall and sometimes you'd spit, you'd do a whole lot of things, fall in the, do whatever. But if you really want to come through, you're willing to go through the labor that's necessary to produce the outcome. Now granted, we found out that you don't necessarily have to do all that to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but you know what was good about it? We learn how to lose ourselves. We learn how to prioritize. We learn how to forget what we look like and forget what people thought. I want my Holy Ghost blessing. And I believe a lot of people don't come through because they just don't want it bad enough. But when you really, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, I wish I had three people that knew what I was talking about. Song says, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed all night long. I just couldn't be contented until I found the Lord. I want him more than a car. I want him more than an outfit. 
I want him more than another phone. I want him more than this. I want him more than the air that I breathe. That's what labor is like. Honey, you're going to have to go through to get that baby out. And sometimes the mother may say, I can't do no more. Or you're going to have to do no more. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. We just can't walk away from here and go get lunch. It don't work like that. The baby's got to come out. And mom, you got to participate in getting this baby out. How many of us are sitting in this house right now with a blessing from God? And the Lord is saying to us, you got to get that blessing out. And you're not going to get it out sitting up there nice and cute and with your hands crossed and sitting there. No, how bad do you want a breakthrough? How bad do you want God to show up in your house? How bad do you want God to turn your situation around? Are you desperate enough? Sometimes God has to allow things to happen to move us into a desperate state. Sometimes God has to pull his hand back because you think you got this on your own. God says, I'm going to pull my hand back long enough for you to say, God, I can't make it without you. And the Bible says, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord. When is the last time you called on God's name? When is the last time you opened your mouth and said, Jesus, come and see about me? If you get in a bad state sometimes, you'll cry out unto the Lord. Sometimes you say to somebody, call on the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wait a minute, I could barely even hear that. I know God can hear everything, but wait a minute, that don't sound like you're desperate. When you really get down to the bottom barrel, you'll call it. Let the church right now just say, Jesus. Jesus. I'm trying to tell you. Lord, have mercy. It's, it's like a mother. It's like, like a mother. She, her labor provides the grace of deliverance because a mother is a deliverer. Oh, yes, she is. Number four. The mother's parenting, follow me now, the mother's parenting provides the graces for rearing outside of the womb. Where she's born the child, she's carried the child, nourished, protected, and then delivered. Now she parents the child through the grace of rearing which entails, after the child is out of the womb, nourishment, protection, and deliverance. She still has to feed that child. She still has to protect that child. And she still has to deliver that child whenever that child is trapped in life's containment. She's got to help get that child out. She's got to do that for the child. Listen, throughout the various stages of development, even into adulthood, because mothers are multi-talented. They're multi-talented. Mothers have to teach children how to do the homework, how to clean up the house, how to cook, how to clean a womb. Not womb, wound. Lord, don't clean no womb, please. Help us, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, help us, Lord. That was a slip of the tongue. But mothers, they have to help build the project for school. Whatever is required, a mother has to even teach a child how to defend themselves. Mother has to put wisdom into the child and say, when this happens, when that happens, you do this, you don't do this. Because mothers are multi-talented. Because parenting is a multi-talented skill. It's not fixed in any one place. And I think sometimes parenting is most challenging when the child is an adult. Because adult children have adult problems. I wish I had some help in here. I can remember, I can remember when my kids were young, I can remember just wanting them to just get older quick. Then I could sleep at night. Get older quick. So remember we, when we were, Marcus was young, and every, every time we go to a restaurant, every time, as soon as we sit down, Daddy, 
I go bathroom. I just asked you, did you need to go to the bathroom? I was, I took you in there. Why would you wait until my steak is on the table, is hot, and then you got a bathroom for you to go in there and do a little piece of nothing? And I come back to a cold steak. Any parents know what I'm talking about? But it, 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 but I thought that was a big problem. That was a little thing. When they get older and situations happen, it's, it's on a different level. But parents don't expire. Your position doesn't terminate. You continue to be a parent. I'm 66, and you're still my mother. You're still my mother. And sometimes the only thing you can do for me is pray. But that's a parent. That's a mother. And a mother knows how to go in, go into the presence of God, and, 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 and intercede on behalf of her child. Has a mother ever said, God, for my daughter, Lord, for the sake of my son? Anybody ever done that, mothers, in the house? Where you begin to call on the name of God for your child because I can't go in there. I can't be with them, but God, you can. And so, God, I'm still parenting. I'm still rearing my child outside of the womb. And, God, I now appeal to you. Parenting. Wow. We looked at a mother who nourishes, protects, delivers, parents. But here's another one. I'll stop at this one. Listen to this. A mother's commitment provides the grace of support to the minor and the adult child because mothers are dependable empathizers. Empathy. I don't just feel bad for your pain. I can feel your pain. I could look in your eyes and I can tell there's something you're not telling me, but there's something going on with you. And I want you to tell me so I, I can support you, so I can encourage you, so I can direct you. Oh, that takes commitment. That takes commitment. Uh, Mom, I, I, I don't want to take much of your time. Take as long as you need. I'm your mother. I'm here for you. Don't you hear God talking to us? Come unto me. Oh, ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come. Don't worry about what time it is. You can call me in the midnight hour. I'll answer you. Bible says before we call, he's already answered. You know why? Because he is a man of sorrow. And he's acquainted with our grief. He's in all points, listen, tempted like as we, yet without sin. And yet God, he pitieth our every groan. And, and God taps into where we are so he can support us to be where we ought to be. The truth to be told, God should have cut us off a long time ago. Anybody in here honest enough to say, God should have been cut me off. But thank God for his grace. I said, thank God for his grace. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. That's why a mother can do that. That's why a mother can say, you were wrong. But come here and let me give you a hug. You should have never did that. I told you don't do it. But tell me what you need. That's love. Grace is love. Grace extends itself. Why? Because through a mother, God provides his body. He did that on the cross. Through a mother, God provides his womb. 
That's the church. As we go and we just and witness, and then babies are born into the kingdom of God. Through a mother, God provides labor. God will pursue us. He'll follow us. He'll search us out. God will tolerate being rejected. And sometimes a mother is rejected by her children. And she still keeps on loving. She still keeps caring. She won't write you off. Through a mother, God provides parenting. He raises us, helps us to mature and to develop, to become what God has chosen that we should be. Even though I may not feel I have the ability, and typically God will call us to do things that we feel unprepared to do. He'll ask us to do something, and we say, God, I can't do that. And here come God but I'll help you. I'll walk with you, but I'll show you how. And through a mother's commitment, God has committed himself to us. He's dependable. He will show us the way. I I, I begin to look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. And as I begin to look at that whole process where Mary had to provide her body for the grace of nourishment to Jesus before he was born. She had to feed him in her womb. She had to provide her womb for his protection. He was coming to save the world, but he needed someone to protect him he got here. Isn't that amazing? That God would let us participate in who he is and what he does. That Mary's labor in the manger, in the stable, to provide the grace of deliverance. She delivered the deliverer. Is that amazing? God is saying there are things I want to do. I want to borrow you to get it done. I want to use your labor to deliver your brother, to deliver your sister, to set somebody free. That Mary's parenting. The Bible says, and I want to read this out of Luke. I thought this was amazing. Luke 48, 52. I thought this was amazing. When Mary and Joseph had gone to the Jerusalem, they had gone to Jerusalem for the annual feast. And when they left in a big group, they thought Jesus was with them. He was a child. And they found out that he was not with them a day later. So they had to go back to find him. In verse 48, and when they saw him, when they saw Jesus, they were amazed And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. We didn't know where you were. We were terrified. And Jesus said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them. Listen, so they got him. And then he went down with them and came to Lazarus. And the Bible says, and was subject unto them. He was subject unto their parenting. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart because she knew there was something exceptional about this child. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. How could God increase? Because he He laid aside his allness to have to acquire it like you and I. Jesus, the creator of all things, laid aside his deity 
to become humanity. And everything he needed in humanity, he acquired it just like you and I, which meant he had to pray. He had to talk to his heavenly father and ask the father to give him what was already his from eternity past. He laid aside his all-knowingness so he could learn what he already knew. Huh. And then practice what he learned to perfect it. That's Jesus. He did that because through a mother, nourishment, protection, and rearing, and support was extended to him. And then Mary's commitment provided the grace of support. Listen to this. How did Mary support Jesus? She stood at the cross. Remember when Jesus was being christened and Simeon said to her, a sword is going to pierce your heart. Remember that? What a weird thing to say at a christening. And here she's standing at the foot of the cross, a mother watching her son be crucified. It pierced her heart. The Bible says his disciples forsook him and fled, but not his mother. Everybody left, but his mother was standing there. Why? Because that's my son. And even though my son is my savior, I can't abandon him. So she stood at the cross because he was her son. My God. If you don't see love in that, oh my God, a mother a mother who would support. And then in Jesus' ministry, when they were at the wedding feast and they ran out of wine, and she went to Jesus and said, they're out of wine. And he said, woman, what have I to do with thee? Now, in that time, in that Aramaic language, woman was a, was a, was a title of great honor. So it wasn't like we would say today, oh, woman. No, it wasn't like that. No, this, was, th this meant I really esteem you. Woman, wh what have I to do with thee? And he says, my hour is not yet come. And if I start doing miracles now, I'm going to start unveiling who I am. And then his mother, she didn't even respond to him. She turned to his servants and said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. You know, some, some of the greatest wisdoms I've learned, I learned from my mother and my mother-in-law and my wife mother. How many know your wife is your mother? <laughs> she just turned her head and said, here he go. Here he go again. But it's the truth. Al Spence, you know I'm telling the truth, right? Uh, We would not survive without our wives, mothers. Am I telling the truth, God? I know that's right. Let the men say amen. amen. Deacon Goss, I didn't hear you. I know that's right. Because they'll, they'll look out for us. They'll make sure we eat, make sure we're doing this, make sure we take care of that. Are you awake? Are you sure you're awake? I'm going to call you. In, in, I'm on the highway coming back home from Jersey. I'm going to call you in an hour. Are you sure you're awake? Yes, I'm awake. Are you sure? I'm talking to you, aren't I? Because I know how you did last time. But, th but that's, that's a mother. That's, that's a mother. So what is my point? My point is that we understand that God loves us so much until there's some things he does directly hands-on, but there's some things he will do through the hands of a mother. It's still God's love because he's the God 
of all graces. And he will supply to us whatever we need. God wants us to see increase. He wants us to see increase in every area of our lives. God wants to see us walk in excellence and, and walk in greatness. God wants to see us walk in fulfillment. Do you not know that the things that are deep within us that we long for, did you not know God has put that longing in us? And it's his grace that will pull it out of us and bring us to a realization of what we've longed for. There's some things that look like it just ain't going to ever happen. Oh, it'll happen. It's going to happen by God's grace. It's by his grace. For by grace are you saved. I used to think that only meant salvation from eternal damnation. But by grace, by God's grace, Goodness saved means delivered. For by God's grace are we delivered from any captivity. No matter where it is, no matter what it is, no matter what dilemma we're in, it is by God's grace, by God's goodness, by God's favor, by God's power, by God's might, by God's provisions. By God's mercy. Did you hear what I just said? God can't even give me grace unless he gives me the grace of mercy. He's got to block what I deserve so he can give me what I don't deserve. I don't know if there are 10 people in here right now that can honestly say it was grace that brought me safe thus far. And it's grace that will lead me on. For by grace are you saved. And often that grace comes through mothers. It comes through their counsel. It comes through their hugs. It comes through their kisses. It comes through their, listen, sometimes all a mother can do is give you her presence. But when she walks in the room, all of a sudden it's like the whole atmosphere just changes. You're looking at the effects of grace. Sometimes God says, you just need to know I'm here. Ha, didn't I tell you I'd never leave you nor forsake you? And even though you're here because you made a wrong turn, I'm still here. And I'm going to be here to lift you up. I'm going to turn you around. You think things are not going to get better? God says, I didn't come to see you destroyed. But I came to see you recover. I came to see you renewed. And, and I'm a witness in this house today that God is a recoverer of those of us that are caught in all kinds of situations. Sometimes it's no fault of your own, but you're still there. But it's the grace, the presence of God that will be there to see us through. I thank God for his grace. Would you take 15 seconds and just thank God for grace? Come on. 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 This shouldn't be a struggle. And this shouldn't even be a big ask. As a matter of fact, and I'm talking to young people, this shouldn't even be a sacrifice. There ought to be young people standing on your feet thanking God for grace. Oh, you ought to be doing it. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Thank God for his grace. His grace. It's grace, it's amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. I could stop right there. I said, I could stop right there. Sometimes I struggle to love myself. And I sometimes think I know the whole story. But there's a whole lot even about us God never even showed us. And sometimes God didn't tell us everything about us because we couldn't handle it. I don't know why he came 
to love me so. Have it but seven. We've experienced struggling to forgive ourselves. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I forgot that. How could I have messed up like that? But God says, I'm going to look beyond your fault. God says, some of you need to know, and, and, and mothers do this for us, by the way, but God wants us to know that God says, yeah, I, I saw what you did. I, I, I knew you were going to do it. But I'm not focusing on that right now. What are you, what are you focusing on, God? Your need. I'm moved by what you need. And on this Mother's Day, I've come to give you amazing grace. I, I, I'm going to give you grace that's just incredible to even conceive of it. We saw it when he hung on that cross. They were saying, crucify him. Release unto us Barabbas. He's a known murderer and thief. But crucify him. And what did he say on the cross? You did this. You did that. You did this. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. That's not what he said. He said, Father, forgive them. Because right now, they need forgiveness. The Lord told me to tell you in this house today, that he came today expressly to forgive. Did you hear what I just said? He said he came to wipe the slate clean. And it doesn't matter how stained it is. He says, I'm not leaving until your slate is completely sinless and clean. And then I'm going to cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness and God said and I'll remember it no more you don't have to come to me anymore and ask me to forgive it because I won't know what you're talking about I'm going to remove it from me as far as the east is from the west and why are you doing that God because I'm going to give you another chance to get it right I'm going to give you another chance to walk as though it never happened God is saying, and no good thing will I withhold from you if you accept my amazing grace. Saints, that's a bargain. Come on and give God the praise right now. Come on. Give him the praise. Give him a thank you. Oh, that ain't good enough. Not for amazing grace. Not for amazing grace. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. And by the way, God doesn't need us. We need him. But he's giving us grace that we could never produce ourselves. As a matter of fact, God is saying, when you stand before me in judgment, hear this. If you accept my amazing grace, rather than judge you, I'm going to give you a reward. Oh, hallelujah to God. Somebody thank God. Thank him. Thank him. Action. Subscribe to New Harvest Ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video.